Hi, I'm Greg Millerin, Associate Principal Flutist with the Minnesota Orchestra, and I want to thank the Upper Midwest Flute Association for asking me to make this video uh, during this time when we can't actually all gather together for Flute Fest. Um, it's my pleasure to be able to talk about a subject that I find very fun personally, but most people probably don't think of it as that fun, which is long tones. Um, most of us think of long tones and we go, oh my god, boring. And I remember uh, when I was a student uh, in high school, actually, going to a James Galway master class and him talking about how he didn't really like long tones either because his mind would wander and he wasn't really focusing in on what he was doing. So uh, rather than doing the standard kind of chromatic long, long tone exercise, most of us learn uh, at some point early in our flute development, and I did too, which is something, something like this, you know. and then on and on all the way down the range of the flute, which does get uh, pretty tiresome mentally after a while. And yeah, my, my mind would start wandering too. Uh, he had a different um, long tone warm up that he liked, uh, which you can find online. He still um, talks about it and it's no, no secret. And his goes like this. And by making more of a melody with a shape and an expression, it's a lot more interesting to play. So I really like that concept when it came to warm-ups. Um, and my only gripe with that particular warm-up is that it starts uh, off being a little too complicated and with uh, too many leaps in it. Um, I like to start off with something a little simpler, more like the chromatic warm-up, but I wanted to come up with something that uh, was also a little more interesting to play with a little bit more of a shape to it. Um, and I wanted something where I could really just hang out on a note for a while uh, and just uh, settle into what I like to call my checklist of things um, that I want to make sure are working for me when I'm playing. So it's kind of like when you turn your car on and the dashboard lights up with all the different lights and the car sort of does its own internal systems check um, and then gradually all the lights should go off right so you kind of want to do that same thing when you're first starting out for the day do kind of your own little systems check and I think that's a big reason why long tones are so useful is they give you the mental space to be able to zero in and go through your checklist to make sure different physical aspects of your plane are working for you such as your hand position, your posture, uh, the position of the flute on your face, um, is your embouchure and um, other physical parts of your body free of unnecessary tension? Are you able to breathe freely? Um, are the notes starts and note endings good? And of course it can tra transition into vibrato articulation um, and other things too, but you basically wanna get those first uh, physical things um, uh, checked off on your checklist first. So um, I do a warm-up that's basically similar to the, the that first chromatic warm-up like I uh, demonstrated but again has a little bit more of a melodic shape to it. So I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it and um, I'll just play through the first two measures here. So it goes like this. So in this example, you see I have, it goes beyond the two measures um, for another set here of quarter notes. But you can just take this first two measure bit and transpose it chromatically down the flute um, and get a nice long tone exercise that way.
And uh, if I'm doing ascending, I would just change it up a little bit to go like this. Um, and I should mention that I'm not quite doing everything um, I want to accomplish in this. Basically, it, you could do this without vibrato um, or with vibrato. I would probably actually recommend doing it once without vibrato and then uh, repeat it in a second time, adding vibrato on the first long note, the first held note. And then um, when you get to the second measure, the whole note on the second measure, uh, have the vibrato start immediately. So you're getting practice with both adding vibrato to a note and then on the second note starting the vibrato from the beginning of the note and then fading the vibrato out um, at the end of the note like this. And then uh, you can see that I added in these five measures of repeated quarter notes with, uh, with rests in between them. And this is sort of a, a bonus you can add to the warm-up if you wish. Um, and I find it useful to kind of get, um, to add this so that I can get my uh, practice with dynamics and control over dynamics and control over starts of notes and ends of notes happening uh, right away, even with uh, initial long tone exercise. So I would practice this with a tuner on and um, transition into this quarter note sequence following that first two measure bit. Um, and I'm really concentrating on having clean starts at the front of the notes. Um, I would breathe uh, after the second measure, so I practice getting a nice, comfortable, relaxed breath. And um, so I'm, the things I'm thinking about are um, keeping unnecessary tension out of my plane, out of my body, and then also uh, having a, a nice sound on all of these notes and uh, control dynamics um, and have it be in tune. So it would go something like this. You can see I have every dynamic listed. Uh, I think it was Guther Schuller who was always telling people there's only eight dynamics. Uh, so they are, you know, double, uh, triple P, double P, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, double F, uh, and triple F. So I want to get eight distinct dynamic levels through those series of quarter notes. Uh, of course, the intonation challenges of this get uh, more difficult. Though in the very low range and also in the very high range. But that's uh, part of the fun of this. So if I'm um, warming up for the first thing of the day, I'll probably do uh, a set of this, uh, in three or four in the middle register, three or four in the low register, and then three or four in the high register. Of course, you can do the entire chromatic range too. That's very useful. It takes more time. I don't always have that much time. So I would just select um, probably five or six of these um, uh, to start on for the whole day. So the next warm-up I want to talk about that I like is based on the Moise Tone Development Through Interpretation book. And let me grab that quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so I found my Tone Development Through Interpretation book by Marcel Moise. You can see it's a little bit worn, the cover's coming off, uh, but that's okay. That means it's well loved and well enjoyed. So um, this is a wonderful book uh, where he writes lots of writes out lots of uh, melodies. A lot of them are tunes from opera uh, opera arias, and um, the idea is to study uh, kind of the colors and suppleness you can get in your tone 
through playing these melodies. At the very back of the book, which is a little bit less well known, he has a series of exercises. And um, on page 76, he has um, a series of exercises laid out, and I'll um, put this up on the screen so you can see a little easier. Uh, where he basically takes the range of an octave and divides it up uh, first by tritone and then um, through uh, continuing the continuing uh, the middle notes uh, move by a chromatic progression away from each other till you gradually just get an octave. And what I love about this following the chromatic style warm-up is now we're doing uh, intervals wider than a step. Um, uh, but it only covers the range of an octave now. So we're getting a little wider range and we're getting some some um, leaps rather than steps in the warm-up. So basically I took uh, what Moise did and I kind of wrote it out more in complete form for the whole range of the flute. And uh, so if I'm doing this exercise, uh, I wrote. you can see I wrote it out in quarter notes, but uh, don't feel like you have to play exactly in rhythm with this one. Again, it's a long tone exercise, so the idea is don't really move on to the next note till we feel like you have gotten your sound goals accomplished on, on every note. But of course the goal of this is to get um, as smooth of transitions between these notes as possible, moving from one note to the next in a very legato way. And then, of course, there's lots of variations we can do on this, but the basic exercise goes like this. So that's basically how a simple version of that would go. That would be a way I would start playing this. And you can see in this one I'm starting with on low A and moving up into the middle register. So this is a good way to practice warming up, moving from low into middle register. Um, of course you could uh, also do this moving from middle register into high register. So that's very useful as well. And then there's a bunch of variations you can do with this too that I, that I like to add in to um, add additional elements into my warm up. So uh, a really useful one for this one is starting louder at the bottom and then getting quieter as you go to the top note. So putting in a decrescendo. And when I'm doing this, I generally play it even a little bit slower than I just did. So it would be more like this. So I'm getting more distinct dynamic levels on the notes. And then I would continue through the rest of the exercise like that. And of course that's uh, not an easy thing to do is make a big dynamic difference between a much lower note and a much higher note. The flute likes to get louder as it goes up. Um, it's just what it likes to do. So this is a way to practice counteracting that and getting good, getting better um, at that skill. It's also of course useful to practice it the other way starting uh, very quietly on the first note and then adding a crescendo so you're quite loud at the end. Because um, again, the flute does like to go sharp as it goes up. So um, practicing it that way is a good way to work on counteracting that particular tendency of the flute also. 
Um, another thing I like to do is start the note, start this exercise actually with uh, the upper octave note first. So you're adding in um, a descending octave at the front of it. So it would be, for instance, uh, like this. I'm just adding the upper A at the beginning. of uh, reading what I wrote as I skipped ahead of measure <laughs> as I was playing it. Um, I usually like to do this one from memory actually because um, it makes me also add that concentration element of what comes next. Um, and then another way to practice this is add um, a little articulation. So just at, at first add a legato articulation. The notes are still connected, but I'm articulating them. Uh, a second way to do this uh, adding articulation would be to play the notes separate. So that would be like this. So you're getting in that uh, practice of just uh, sort of bullseyeing each note um, and being as precise with your embouchure placement as possible. Best to do that once you've already done it slurred, of course, uh, so you can sort of get your embouchure educated on where it should be placing those notes. Another thing I like to do with this one is add a little articulation exercise to the last note. So I'm getting this long tone practice, but then also uh, getting, um, getting in some uh, double tonguing practice, uh, adding, adding that element into it, so like this. So some form of uh, articulation exercise added it on the last note like that. So basically what that was is I practiced my does first, then my cuz first at the back of the mouth, um, and then did a kata, 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 kata. So with the K first, sort of a reverse double tongue. And I do that one two or three times because that's always harder than the regular double tongue. We're not as used to that. And then practicing the regular double tongue, taka, 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 and gradually speeding it up. You can um, add a metronome into this exercise to hold yourself uh, really accountable to um, a certain speed that you want to achieve. Uh, the last thing I like to do with this this exercise is sing and play. I think singing and playing is really um, a good thing to add into your warm-ups. Um, it somehow just gets your tone centered in the right place. Uh, Robert Dick talks about there being sort of a sympathetic uh, resonance that happens when the throat is in tune with the note you're playing. And I think there's some truth to that, and it's worth exploring. Um, it definitely opens your throat up. I find it opens my throat up anyway, and um, gets a lot of things happening in sync. And it's interesting to just hear that uh, with the with this exercise. Here, here, if you can keep that um, throat tuning consistent through it. Uh, So definitely worth doing that with singing and playing too. It's another um, fun way to sh shake it up and add a little more interest to our long tone exercises. So the last uh, warm up I wanna talk about today is based on Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man. And this is the most complicated of them uh, in the sense that it spans the widest range. This one now spans two octaves instead of just the one octave. 
um, and it has a lot of wide leaps in it. So um, in a sense, it's the hardest one because uh, it's really all about keeping that control through a wide range of the instrument. And it also uh, has a lot of open intervals in it. And, that, and that's a big reason why I chose this particular melody is because you can see um, if you put a, a drone on, which is what I typically do with this, I put a drone on the tonic note. So in this case, this would be a C. I would put a drone sounding on C. And then you create uh, unisons with the C, open fourths and fifths with the Gs and the Fs. And um, so you hear immediately if you're in tune on those notes. You, you want to listen especially carefully for true sounding uh, intervals in those cases. And of course you want to maintain a very smooth legato feeling with this, uh, approaching it with a gen gentle, uh, approach it gently, uh, play it slowly, uh, fairly quietly. I never really get loud on this one. Uh, the loudest I would play it is mezzo forte and would generally want to play it a little on the quieter side because uh, it's just really about getting that uniform tone through a wide range uh, with a uniform dynamic. And one reason, another reason I picked this melody is because I like it. And um, that's another thing you can do for a warm up is just find a melody that you like and use that as your warm up and then transpose it into every key. I think good melodies for that are A, melodies that you like, that you connect with, and then uh, so it's fun to play. And then also melodies that do have these opportunities in them for open fourths and fifths, unisons and octaves with a drone you can put on. So you're practicing uh, intonation and listening at the same time. So let me put a drone on here on a C. So there's a C and I'll put that on while I play this um, opening to Fanfare of the Common Man. This is actually from the third symphony of Aaron Copland. It's the opening of the fourth movement uh, where it does start with uh, second, first flute and second flute in octaves with each other. Um, and I can't remember exactly what key it starts in, but uh, I, I started on uh, with a G here because I think it's a good uh, sort of neutral place to start this particular melody on the flute uh, and get a nice benefit from it. So I'll put my drone on C and let's see how this goes. That's how that one goes. Um, you can see I played with very minimal vibrato. Um, it's okay to add a little, uh, but I wouldn't use too much, especially for this particular melody. It's very kind of uh, serene, placid, contemplative kind of melody. Um, and then, yeah, transpose it into uh, uh, every key, going up and down the flute. Um, and I think you'll find transposing uh, all of these warm-ups into these different keys poses different challenges depending on the notes that are involved. And that for me is kind of one of the fun things of uh, working on these warm-ups. So I want to thank the Upper Midwest Flute Association again for asking me to do this video and thank you for watching. And um, if you uh, have any questions about this uh, at all, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I all have been transcribing these into notation software as well, um, so if you'd like a copy of them, I can uh, transmit them to you for a nominal fee. Just get in touch with me at gregmillerin at gmail.com, and I'll put that uh, in the description of the video below.
Thanks again and happy practicing.